and over the clouds and around the world, here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends, Stinky and Shake! Now it's the Animal Show! Right? Oh, oh yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah. Uh, hello, all you little animals out there. I'm Stinky. And I'm Jake. And today we'll meet two animals with extraordinary, extraordinary. beaks. The hornbill and the woodpecker. <laughs> hey, Jake, what do you mean, extraordinary beaks? Well, well I'll tell you, he, he means this beauty of mine, you see. Can, can I get a one-shot here, Peter? <gasps> oh, thank you, darling. Uh, look at that curve, that sharpness, that patina of perfection. Yeah, well, you do have a very, very nice beak, Armstrong. Yeah. But uh, but the hornbill and the woodpecker have beaks that are really special. So, uh, in other words, uh, you think my beak is nothing special? Well, well no, I, I know when I've been insulted. But Armstrong, yeah, that's not a very nice thing to say, Jake. But that, that's not the way I meant that. Armstrong, stinky. <sighs> Q Armstrong. Whoa! Yeah. Oh, hurry, Armstrong, I'm hurry, coming, hurry! I'm coming. Now it's time for. Uh, that's amazing, Armstrong. Oh, today the head rattling work of the woodpecker. Oh, 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 oh! You mean Mr. Extraordinary Beak? Take it easy, Armstrong. The woodpecker really does have amazing abilities. He can hammer into a tree 18 times a second without hurting himself. Hey, that looks painful. How does he do it? He can do it because there's hardly any space between his brain and his skull, so his brain doesn't bounce around inside. Well, that's always a good thing. Second, he's got special padding called cartilage. And third, the muscles and bones of his jaw make sure his beak always hits the tree in a straight line. Well, I'll be. That really is extraordinary. The hammering head of the woodpecker. Another animal that's making me rethink my beak and will make you say... <gasps> that's amazing! Hey, Jake, how come you made fun of Armstrong's beak? Oh, Stinky, all I said was that today's guests have very special beaks. And you were absolutely right, Jake. I, I just saw that woodpecker's beak and I was impressed. You were? Yeah, that beak is better than mine. And I'm gonna do something about it. No, 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 Armstrong, don't do anything crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's too late to stop him, Jake. Yeah. There's only one thing we can do now, bring out our first guest. A good idea. And here she is from Africa and Asia. Asia. Hortense, the hornbill. Oh, that tree almost took my beak off. I simply must be more careful or I'll be a horn without a bill. <laughs> <laughs> that was rather amusing. Yeah. Gentlemen, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Well, welcome to the show. Whoa, that is some beak you got there. Whoa. Oh, thank you, Stinky. We hornbills are rather proud of our beaks. Allow me to show you. Oh. Don't tell me you brought footage. Indeed. This is a yellow-billed hornbill, one of six species. We range in size from as small as a blackbird to as large as a turkey. Why is this hornbill feeding that tree? Oh, Stinky, he isn't feeding the tree. That father hornbill is bringing food to the mother hornbill and their chicks. The mother and chicks live inside a tree? Naturally. See, here is the mother hornbill closing up the entrance. She uses her beak to spread clay and mud like a mason smoothing out cement. But why would she want to close herself up inside that tree? After a mother hornbill lays her eggs, she seals herself in the tree for seven weeks until the eggs have hatched and the chicks can take care of themselves. Well, now, how can she and the chicks live inside a tree for seven weeks? What do they eat? That is Father Hornbill's job. He will make between 40 and 50 trips a day, bringing food to Mother and the chicks. Berries, figs, fruits, even insects and lizards. He can carry it all in that extraordinary beak of his. Where did Mom go? As soon as the mother hornbill leaves the nest, the young chicks immediately begin to rebuild their wall, all by themselves. As they get bigger, they will each break the wall and leave the nest one by one. Well, I can sure see why they say the hornbills have amazing beaks. You can use them to get food, to defend yourself, even to build a wall. Well, yeah, but how do you fly with such a big beak? Oh, good question, Stinky. Despite its large size, our beak is surprisingly lightweight. Otherwise, we'd be terribly top-heavy and never get off the ground. So I guess you'd say that the best kind of beak for a bird to have is a big beak, right? Oh, I'm rather fond of big beaks myself. But birds with small beaks can also be quite extraordinary, too. 
Take, for instance, my friend, the Puffin. Okay, where do you want us to take him? <laughs> no, I just mean I want to show you some pictures of Puffins. Wow, what a beautifully colored beak. Oh, yes, the Puffin's beak turns lovely colors in the spring. That's a signal to other Puffins that these birds are ready to breed. After breeding season, the Puffin's beak will turn a dull gray with a yellow tip. Now, what is this Puffin here doing? He's gathering grass and twigs and other nesting material to use in their underground nest as a cushion for the eggs and to keep their chicks warm. And now he would bring that grass down to the nest to warm up the little chick. That's a little puffin chick. He's huge. Oh, yes. Puffins feed their young very, very well. There's mother with some more sand eels for her baby to eat. My puffin friend tells me they're delicious. And when that chick is old enough, he come out and float on the wind just like these puffins here are doing. Well, with the size of that chick, it had better be a big wind. <laughs> well, Hortense, thank you for telling us all about Hornbills, puffins, and their extraordinary beaks. Uh, uh, did, did you say extraordinary beaks? <laughs> Get a load of mine. Uh, it's the woodpecker look. What do you think? Well, I, for one, think it's far too dull. I think you'd be much better off with a beak like mine. Oh. Yeah, that is a rather prominent proboscis you have there. Uh, can, can you think? Tell me about it a little bit. Tell me something. Oh, most certainly. Walk this way. Oh, uh, the Hortense Armstrong. It's too late, Jake. There's only one thing to do now. Huh? It's time for <gasps> baby, baby talk. talk. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> no problem, dear. I got it covered. <sighs> right, there we go. Hello. Hello in there. Here's some nice vegetation for you to eat. Thanks, Dad. More, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. more, 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 So, Jake, what did you think of Armstrong's woodpecker beak? Well, there's a lot more to being a woodpecker than just a beak. You need a hard head. <laughs> well, I've got a hard head. Here, give it a try. Okay. Wow, with a head like that, you ought to be in this next song. <laughs> uh, do you hear bells ringing? Uh... Folks like us, we don't make no fuss. We don't scream or scratch or shout. We just knock a few heads together. That sorts the whole thing out. We don't go in for no fancy talk when there's something. Decide who's best and all that stuff So we knock a few heads together To see who's really tough Some folks discuss their point of view Politely over tea But we knock a few heads together And the problem QED I'm Wanda Rat, well, reporter Getting you answers to today's tough questions Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer Sir, can you answer a question? <laughs> You're kidding? Does a dog have fleas? Please, sir, I ask the questions. Okay, okay, okay. Right. This is a yellow-billed hornbill. Can you tell me how many different species of hornbill there are? <laughs> now, can you answer my question? No, but I can answer mine. This dog definitely has fleas. Oh, 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 and, oh, and now, oh, the answer to oh, my question. Oh, oh, my there are oh, six species oh, of hornbill, including oh, the ground, oh, the upper guinea, the yellow-billed, and the red-billed. Let's take a closer look at the ground hornbill. As its name suggests, ground hornbills live on the ground. They can be found living on the ground in Africa on the steppes and savannas. They prefer to live where the grass is short because it's easier to find food. They walk along together in small parties looking for food and they rarely fly. 
The ground hornbill is the only species of hornbill where the female is not imprisoned inside the nest hole. She therefore has to molt in stages and must support herself when breeding. Ground hornbills eat mostly small vertebrates and large insects. As you can see, they also eat snakes and have incredible eyelashes. This is Rhonda Rat reporting on the ground hornbill. Back to you, Stinky and Jake. Thanks, Rhonda. And now it's time to see what's cooking with our good friend and bad cook, Yves Saint Laroche. I'm so very elegant. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour, my petite animal friends. Today, I, Yves Saint Laroche, will show you what to serve a woodpecker. Now, I did not have time to prepare this meal myself, so I have ordered a delicious tree. A, a tree? You, what a second? What kind of meal is this? I mean, who can eat this, a tree? Oh, I am so angry. Don't be mad, Eve. This tree contains the perfect meal for a woodpecker. It does? Sure. I dig bugs out of the bark with my beak. See? What do you know? A tree really is a perfect meal for a woodpecker. Even Eve can learn something new. That was yummy. Thanks, Eve. Oh, and by the way, don't say timber. Hmm? Why can't I say timber? <laughs> that is why. Thanks, Eve. In case you didn't guess, that woodpecker you just met is our second guest. Now let's bring him out so we can ask him some questions. And thank him for dropping a tree on Eve. <laughs> From the wooded areas around the world, world, here is Winston the woodpecker. No, no, no. I didn't mean to drop that tree on Eve. Not deliberately, anyway. I just hit a weak spot and whoops, there it went. <laughs> Hello, Stinky. Hello, Jay. Welcome to the show, Winston. And thanks for answering a question that I've always wanted to ask. You mean, why do woodpeckers peck a trees? No. How big a tree does it take to flatten Eve Saint Laurent? <laughs> I'll get you for that, you little stinker. <laughs> uh, I have a question. How do you stay on the tree when you're pecking at it? Well, that's easy. Take a look. Oh, oh. Ooh, footage. Yeah. You see, we woodpeckers are built for perching on the side of a tree. Well, how do you mean? Well, our claws are sharp and we have two backward-facing toes that are just perfect for digging into the bark of a tree. And our tail feathers are stiff and hard, so we can lean against them to support our weight. Well, how can you hit the tree so hard without hurting your head? Well, there are several ways, but especially important is the padding we have in our heads. It's called cartilage, and it works like a shock absorber. Without that, we'd have a pretty bad headache, or even knock ourselves out trying to drill a hole in a tree. Must be a pretty tough tree. Hey, keep at it, fella. Oh, now, why is this woodpecker drilling such a big hole? Is he trying to get it food? Oh, well, that's not a hole for grabbing food. He's drilling a hole to live in. You mean woodpeckers build homes inside trees just like hornbills do? That's absolutely right, Stinky. But we don't take over a hollow part of the tree like a hornbill. We drill our nest into solid wood. What's that woodpecker doing? He's getting rid of the extra wood shavings. He'll leave some in the nest for warmth or as a cushion for his eggs. But the rest, he'll sweep out with his beak. So your beak is a drill and a broom. And a comb. We also use it to groom ourselves and keep our feathers clean. The eggs are sleeping. Oh, those woodpecker chicks will be hatching soon enough. And that's when a woodpecker's beak really gets a workout. Oh, what do you mean? Well, that's when we have to start bringing back lots of food for our family. Lots of food? I love lots of food. And just wait until you see how we get ours. As you might expect, it starts with our beak. We tap, tap, tap around on a tree until we hear a slightly hollow sound. And what does that mean? It means that there's a space inside the tree where some insect or worm has laid her eggs or made a nest. Once we find that spot, we drill deeper. Now, is that the hole you drilled? That's right. Thanks to our one-of-a-kind tree cam, we're able to show those exclusive pictures of how we get the food out. He keeps tap, tap, tapping until he's got the hole just right, and then... Whoa, what's that? Well, that's a beetle grub, and it's delicious. We use our tongue to get it out. A woodpecker's tongue is long and sticky, and once it grabs the grub, that's it. It's all over. But before we feed ourselves, we have to feed our chicks. Are your chicks good eaters? Are they ever. We'll make hundreds of trips to make sure they get enough food to grow up big and strong. And how long do you have to keep up that feeding schedule? Oh, about three weeks. Then the chicks will come out of the nest to practice their woodpecking and their flying. Hey, come on out, you two. Yeah, come on out, little woodpecker babies. And then, only a month after they hatch, we chase them off so they can make their own nests and start their own families. 
Well, Winston, we don't want to chase you off. We want you to sing a song. Do you mind if it's a song about my beak? That'd hey, be Hey, did somebody say beak? <laughs> yeah, check out my hornbill look. It's the latest. Oh, that's, uh, yeah, it's okay. But have you tried the uh, woodpecker look? Yeah, but it makes my wings look fat. <laughs> Don't you think? Well, good luck with the new beak. Oh, thanks. Yeah, there's only one problem with the hornbill beak. What's, What's that? that? It keeps pulling me over. Oh, Armstrong, oh, are you okay? It's all right. Well, uh, uh, and now here's Winston the Woodpecker with the Woodpecker song. No. Oh. This beak is not like any bill. It's fashioned like a high pad drill. So if a bug should so decide, beneath the bark he'd like to hide. Well, I can dig most any wood, so hiding won't do any good. And when I find a favorite tree, well, this is what you'll hear from me. Knock, 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 did you hear that sound? Knock, 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 is anyone around? Knock, 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 I know you're there. You're hiding in that wood somewhere. It's one of nature's cunning boys. The ladies hear this drumming noise, and they come flying by in spring to hear this courtship song I sing. Together then, we build our nest in crumbling wood. That suits us best, and in that nest, our eggs will hatch with mouths to feed. There's bugs to catch. Knock, 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 did you hear that sound? Knock, 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 is in one round? Knock, 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 I know you're there. You're hiding in that wood somewhere. I got myself a splinter. Does anyone have a pair of tweezers? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're starting. Oh, oh, well, yeah, but what do you think of the new me? It's uh, called the Pelican Profile. You look silly. Yeah, I think so, too. All right, uh, it's time for... Animal Awards. Today, we find out which of these animals has the biggest beak. Is it the Puffin? Oh, wow. The White Pelican. Look at that, she told me. Kingfisher. Very nice. Or the yellow billed hornbill. Oh, I'm that one. And the winner is. The white pelican, whose great big beak has a pouch that can hold three pounds of fish inside it. I'm getting rid of this. I don't even like fish. Congratulations to the white pelican, today's animal award winner. Yeah. Now it's time for today's story. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a beautiful kingfisher named Kalush. Now, Kalush loved fishing more than anything else, and he had the perfect beak for the job. One day, Kalush was waiting to catch the last fish in the pond, but when he dove in, he couldn't catch it. Don't worry, I'll catch that fish, said his friend Kalani, but much to his surprise, he didn't catch it either. Then Kalush tried again. Nothing. Then Kalani tried again. I've got it, said their friend Kingsley, and proudly gobbled it down. And so Kalush, Kalani, and Kingsley went to another pond and lived fishingly ever after. The end. Good story, Jake. Thanks. I sure hope that Kingfisher's beak doesn't give Armstrong any ideas. Yeah. Kingfisher beak? <laughs> Don't be silly. I finally found the perfect beak, the duck bill. Quack, quack, quack. <laughs> hey, I really like that one. You do? Uh-oh. And now, it's habitat. <laughs> so, uh, where are we going today, Bunny? Yeah, uh, somewhere I can show off my new beak I dress. Very <laughs> nice. Thank you. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, today we're going to visit some holes. <laughs> what? Come on, Armstrong, you'll love it. What? <laughs> what is that? It's an abandoned termite mound. Abandoned? So what? Nobody lives here, right? Wrong! Oh. That mongoose lives here. Termite mounds provide shelter from the hot, dry sun and a place to hide from predators. Woo! Hey, who is that? That's a bee-eater, another animal who lives in a hole. Bee-eaters feed almost entirely on bees and wasps. Ah, well, I guess somebody's got to do it. Bee-eaters dig holes in muddy banks for their nests, forming a round chamber at the end of each passage. Cozy. They nest in colonies. Mm, lots of bee eaters. Hey, how does a bee eater know which hole is hers? I guess maybe it's not always that easy to tell, huh? Hey, how'd we get in here? Hey, that's a wolf. I know Armstrong, and we're visiting her den. Quick, quick, hide behind my duck bill.
The den or lair of a wolf may be in a cave, a hollow tree trunk, a thicket, or in a hole in the ground dug by the wolf herself. Oh, hey, I have to admit, those wolf cubs are pretty cute. Ah. Now what? Oh, hey, a mouse. Mice live in holes, too. Here, they're inside the wall cavity of a house. Wow, look at them all. Oh, yes, <laughs> mice can breed at an amazing rate and can live almost anywhere which is dry and safe. Let's go, Armstrong. Funny, I don't think I can. My duck bill is caught. There you go, Armstrong. You're unstuck now. What? Well, now look what you've done. Wait, what? Look at my duck bill. What? It's just a little bit bent. Uh, What's a bent beak between buddies, Armstrong? For habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And Armstrong, the bent billed chicken hawk. Just back from some holes. Now over to you, Rhonda. Oh. Look what you did. Look, don't touch my action. Jack! Oh, no, squirrel. Oh. Once again, I'm Rhonda Rat, rolling reporter, getting you answers to today's tough questions. Let's see if one of these animals knows the answer. Uh, you, sir. Yes? Do you know anything about holes? I'm a mole. Of course I know about holes. Then tell me, who lives in this hole? Is it the puffin, the flying squirrel, uh -huh. the mouse, or the fox? Hmm. Your answer? Well, the hole is too small for a fox, uh -huh. too big for a mouse, uh -huh. and squirrels live in tree holes. Uh -huh. So it must belong to a puffin. Oh, I am so sorry. That is absolutely right. Of course, I knew that. The puffin lives in an underground nest, which it digs using its claws and its small but very effective multicolored beak. This is Rhonda Rat reporting on puffins. Now back to you, Stinky and Jake. So I win some dirt. Wow, that was great. Thank you. You're fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Rhonda. Well, that's all for today, and I want to thank our special guests, Hortense the Hornbill and Winston the Woodpecker. Gee, I, I wonder where Stinky is. Hey, Jake. Uh, Stinky is... Uh, Armstrong, huh? you've got your regular beak back, and it looks great, I must say. Oh, thanks, Jake. Yeah, yeah, this is the best beak for me. Heck, uh, I, I couldn't even open a bag of chips with those other beaks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Armstrong, what was yeah. that you were saying about Stinky? Oh, oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's just trying on the other one over there, and uh, he should be right out. I'll see ya. Trying on the other one? I wonder what that means. Hello, Jake. What do you think? It was uh, Vince, so I'm struck. Let me have it at cost. Stinky, there's only one thing I can say. What's that? Until next time, remember to keep on seeing the world through the eyes of animals. Quack, quack.